starts right now. Good morning. Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday. It's okay. January 21st. It is. Did you make it out and about yesterday? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did, no. Here, give us a play by play. No, but yesterday was like I came to work. Right. I got breakfast on my way back, uh -huh. and then I never left the house. What did you get for breakfast? New breakfast taco. Have to? Yeah. Kind? But, what kind are we talking here? Uh, bean, cheese, and egg. Corn or flour? Always corn. Let's go. <laughs> Mia, what, what side of the aisle do you find? I am a here? flour tortilla girl, but okay. a, a classic staple bean and cheese. Yeah. Like, yes. that is my go-to. Specifically, we'll search out the taquerias I know around town that just have that amazing bean and cheese taco. Shouts to Pete. Right behind us. Honestly, yes. yeah. so true. A great bean and cheese. I guess I know what I'm having for breakfast this morning. There we go. Thanks, guys. My you made it. Yeah, you made it very and, easy yeah. for me. Uh, so yes, not as cold as what we saw yesterday morning, but it is still a very, very chilly start to this Sunday. Temperatures about 10 to 15 degrees above, though, where we were just 24 hours ago. Most of us above freezing in the 30s and low 40s in and around the San Antonio area. You make your way though up into portions of the Hill Country, Southern Edwards Plateau, near the Lost Maples area, even stretching over to Rock Springs out there in Edwards. County and we have seen those temperatures fall to about that 32 degree mark. Still a very light freeze. We are expecting increasing rain chances throughout the day. That's going to be the big story today along with the cold and the cloudiness. Right now nothing going on on authority radar around San Antonio, but I do expect that to change by late morning and especially into this afternoon. So if you do have to step out for any Sunday plans, definitely take the umbrella with you. A few sprinkles possible this morning. Scattered showers already by lunchtime. Later on this afternoon and especially tonight, we're expecting that coverage to increase more widespread rain, maybe a few non severe rumbles possible. That's going to linger into Monday morning there as well. Notice your temperatures today struggling to climb out of the 30. So it is going to be a very cold day. You also will want to take the extra layers with you if you do have to step out and about looking ahead though to tonight. Widespread rain, a few rumbles possible, pockets of heavy rain embedded within that activity, certainly looking to be a possibility there as well. Again, that's lingering into tomorrow morning, so already planning out the morning commute. You're going to want to give yourself a little bit of extra time out the door. Isolated into Monday afternoon, not finished with the rain chances, though, scattered through at least the middle of the week. Warmer temperatures on the way, too. We're going to time it all out for you coming up in just a few, guys. Thank you, Mia. New this morning, a startling scene on the roadways overnight. Police saying they found a man who was ejected from his vehicle on I-10. So take a look. This was a scene a little after 3 this morning. These are the main lanes of I-10 West at Hebner. An operator from TxDOT came across a single vehicle crash, found the man, the presumptive driver, on the other side of the highway. The operator calling EMS and SAPD. That's when the man was pronounced dead. Officials say still unclear what exactly led to this crash. Both north and southbound lanes of I-10 West, they are currently closed as crews continue to investigate. Every single San Antonio ISD school was shut down Thursday and Friday due to district-wide heating issues. In an update last night, a district official told KSAT all campuses have been checked and visited this weekend. Now, crews working through the weekend, making sure students are going to be staying warm when they return to class tomorrow morning. Dozens of HVAC techs, they were also deployed to the situation, trying to get it under control. Superintendent Jaime Aquino will remain in communication with every principal about the level of readiness for school tomorrow. If we learn of any closures or delays between now and then, we'll bring you those updates on air and online. And as Mia was telling us, it is going to start warming up. So. Be hesitant, but if you do need a warm place to stay during today, the city of San Antonio has warming centers all over the city. Just scan the QR code on the screen right now. Sends you right to our article on KSAT.com. We have a full breakdown of the locations. And after the death of their daughter, one family is calling for San Antonians to stop drinking and driving just one week ago. The 26-year-old died in a wrong way crash on I-35. Such a tragic situation. Police did arrest the other driver for suspected DWI intoxication assault. And as our Avery Everett shows us, this family story is far from the only one we talk about. He, he took away my daughter's life. He took away a mother from her son. This family tonight devastated after the death of their daughter. It's been really hard. The things I'll sing without her. Now they're calling on the San Antonio community to change the culture of drinking and driving. It's a choice. I feel like it's a choice. We all have a choice to do that. 26 year old Ulyssa Valero died one week ago. She and two others were driving on I-35. That's when another car traveling the wrong way hit them head on. 
San Antonio police arrested the driver of that vehicle for suspected DWI intoxication assault. I don't think it's fair for people to be driving and drinking. Since 2017, the Texas Department of Transportation has reported that this state leads the nation for fatal and wrong way crashes. And for DWI crashes, stats for Texas show that on average, three people die per day a year. It really hurts us. She didn't deserve to be, to be her, what happened to her. The Valero family now is missing one. And two-year-old Christian is now missing his mom. My rest of my family, they will be there for us, for my grandson. But still, I think that he deserved to have his mother. He's the one that's going to keep us going with her. It's a tragic story that keeps on happening here in Texas. But remember, in this state, we have Bentley's law that went into effect on September 1st, and it makes convicted drunk drivers have to pay child support if they killed a parent of a minor. Now, we know in this case so far, that suspect has only been arrested. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Avery, and your morning headlines. Harvard University is submitting an eight-page document to Congress members investigating the plagiarism scandal involving former President Claudine Gay. The documents contain new information about Harvard's response to the controversy, plus a review of allegations last month. Harvard announced Gay planned to submit corrections to her 1997 Ph.D. dissertation to correct certain citations and add articles she wrote years after her dissertation. So earlier this month, Gay stepped down after she faced criticism from the university's response to rising anti-Semitism on the campus. Well, it's a story we've been talking about a lot. Postage prices, they're rising today. The cost of forever stamps, they're going up two cents. The price to send priority mail and ground advantage shipments, they're also going up more than 5%. Now, this will be the fifth stamp price hike since 2021. They were just 41 cents when they came out back in 2007. The workers' union at Sports Illustrated has released a statement saying Friday was the last day for most staff. In a memo, the magazine publisher told staff their parent company has revoked publishing rights because of missed payments. The parent company says Sports Illustrated will continue but didn't give any details. 1978 Sports Illustrated model Cheryl Teeks tell CNN she's disappointed by the layoffs and the culture around the magazine has shifted. We need to, uh, you know, bring the country up, make them happy, make them full of uh, life and love and sun and fun. The epitome of what America was and uh, continued to be. And so I'm so sad. The layoffs come off just a month after the publisher fired the magazine CEO, which exposed Sports Illustrated for publishing stories with fake author names and profile photos made by AI. We're in the midst of the NFL playoffs, but don't forget the Spurs were playing yesterday. They have won just two games in the month of January, the whole year of 2024. And last night, they visited a fellow seven-win team, the Washington Wizards. So let's go. Wemby starting off long shot, long range, close third quarter, but it didn't stay that way for long. Washington would go on a 19 to 5 run in the fourth frame. Corey Crispit, the driving force. The Spurs in trouble though, under five to go. Here we go. Dem Vassell with that hesitation. He gets that three. Look at that. Just walk backwards. San Antonio catching fire from there. They took the lead with 53 seconds left thanks to a Jeremy Sohan three. Look at that. I mean, come on. We could have shown a few more Wemby highlights. There was a beautiful alley oop. Don't worry though. The Spurs, they win it. Look at this. We love to celebrate the Spurs wins. 131 to 127. They now have their eighth win, and Wemby led the floor in points and, of course, blocks. Trey Jones had another 12 assists in his first NBA win over his brother, Tyus Jones. And, of course, Pop, well, he was very happy with the effort. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Here we go. Where they got the, we got the football playoffs. C.J. Stroud, the undisputed star of the current class of rookie quarterbacks, looking to guide the Texans to their first ever AFC championship with a win in Baltimore. And let's see, can they do it? The presumptive MVP, Lamar Jackson of the one seed Ravens, awaited second quarter AFC divisional playoff game. Knotted up three apiece, play action fake. Lamar taking up the middle himself. We got a 23 yard game. The drive capped off with Lamar. It is fake in the handoff and then just sitting in the pocket. Beautiful, quick strike. 
Baltimore leads 10-3. Jordan Stout kicks a 45-yard punt fielded by Steven Sims. This was awesome to see. He was just called up from the practice squad this week, slips a couple tackles, and he is off to the races. 67-yard punt return touchdown game tied at 10 before half. Now the Texans defense coming up big for back-to-back -back sacks. This was awesome. I'm a Lamar Jackson fan, but to see the Texans defense get to him twice in a row, amazing. Houston's inability to score, though, not amazing. And here we go. Like I said, the presumptive MVP weaving, wobbling all the way into the end zone. See him rolling a little bit. Baltimore would score 24 unanswered points in the second half. And Texans, it was a great effort, great season. But they would fall 34-10, to knocked out of the playoffs. Stroud would throw for 175 yards, did not take a single sack. Jackson, very productive, finishing 152 yards through the air, 100 on the ground. Four total touchdowns, Baltimore hosting the AFC title game for the first time since 1971. And the Texans finish the season 11-8 overall. Texans not deeming this a moral victory. I think we have the capability, we have the team to do it. I know, um, yeah, it's a, it, we come up short, you know, so like you can't look back and like, dang, like, we didn't do nothing special. You got to, of course, like, really look back and, look and, and smile throughout everything. But at the same time, like, it's like, dang, man, what, what if? And that, that's, that's the worst feeling, you know, just having regrets. What if? What if I did this? What if I did that? I mean, let's be honest, great rookie season. All right, this was an amazing game last night. The Niners, they were falling behind. They're the one seed in the NFC. This is where Green Bay started to fall apart, and this is where Brock Purdy, making his case for actually useful on the 49ers, was able to pick up and drive the 49ers down the field. It rains a lot in San Francisco. He had to put on gloves. He's not great, but here we go. If I wasn't to pick a quarterback for the MVP, it would be CeeDee Lamb or this man, Christian McCafferty. This was the touchdown that pretty much sealed it, and then this was the interception that sealed it for the Packers' fate. So the 49ers will go on. They go on to win it, and they will be headed to the NFC Championship. So today it decides who they're going to be playing because the Buccaneers and the Lions, they play today. So whoever wins between the Bucs and the Lions will face the 49ers in the NFC Championship. I didn't watch this game in its entirety. I just mm -hmm. bits and pieces, but right. I loved all the memes afterwards. It was like the 49ers reaction. I'm sorry, the Packers oh, reaction. Yeah, yeah. Like what just happened? Because they were leading the whole game. They looked yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Shout out to Jordan Love, kind of that CJ Stroud type where it's like yeah. his first real season. And they just fell apart at the Their end. Their faces. It just wasn't Tells great. it all. Yeah. yeah. All right, time now, 6-12, 38 degrees. Of course. We got more playoffs today. We got more sports coming up in this half hour, including a preview of what you can expect. We got Chiefs. I know you're a big Chiefs fan right now. I am. Chiefs I wonder Bills. why. Uh, <laughs> it's you. You're the problem. It's you. We're going to go over the game in just a bit. Welcome back, everyone. So the big story today, yes, a chilly start, but rain chances. That's what we're going to be following, especially as we head into the afternoon and even more so tonight. An area of low pressure approaching the Lone Star State, helping spark up that increasing coverage. A few sprinkles expected this morning, scattered showers into the early portions of the afternoon. That continues even into the dinner time time frame, and then more widespread rain activity is expected later on tonight and into early Monday morning. So let's talk all about it. We are quiet here in San Antonio and across the vast majority of South Central Texas, but we're watching a little bit of light rain moving into the far northwestern portions of Valverde County near Pandale. That is actually associated with that low pressure system we've been talking about over the past couple of days. Now digging into portions of the desert southwest, sparking scattered to even widespread rain still across portions of California, even some snow where you get into the mountains of Mexico, the higher elevations there and where temperatures are cold enough, at least in our neck of the woods, mainly across portions of the hill country near Bandera, Kerrville, Lakey, Rock Springs, we will need to monitor for a little bit of light freezing drizzle to light freezing rain associated with all of that activity moving into northern Valverde County here over the next few hours. Now, no travel impacts are expected. This will be very, very light and very brief, but maybe at the worst, a little bit of a light icy glaze on some of those elevated surfaces to kickstart this summer.
Sunday, something we will continue to monitor at least through this morning. But by lunchtime, temperatures rise above 32 degrees across the hill country, and then whatever was left out there just transitions to a very cold liquid rain. That's what most of us are going to be dealing with throughout the remainder of this Sunday. You can see by 3 p.m. we're starting to see that coverage increase. So rain expected again near Lakey, near Rock Springs, stretching down to Uvalde, Catula, maybe even Pleasanton, cashing in on a few sprinkles at that time. And then watch what happens as we advance this on 7 p.m. More of that widespread rain now, especially along and west of I-35. This is going to continue to fill in on your authority radar through the overnight hours. This is midnight. Now we're starting to see maybe a few rumbles of thunder, non-severe storms here, but maybe a little noisy in a few locations, along with some pockets of heavier rain embedded within this activity. It's going to continue to track eastward as we head into the Monday morning drive time frame. So that's something to think about planning out the commute tomorrow. Give yourself a little bit of extra time out there on the roadways and definitely pack the rain gear. Send it with the kiddos as they're headed off to school by lunchtime tomorrow. Most of that is now moving east of our area. A drier afternoon is expected. Just a few lingering isolated showers into Monday afternoon. But notice here even into Tuesday, we're not finished with those scattered rain chances. We're going to call it about a 60% potential for you Tuesday and then a 40% potential as we head into our Wednesday. By the time all is said and done with those scattered rain chances through at least the middle of the week, it's looking like we could pick up on anywhere between two to three inches of rain closer to San Antonio, lower totals the farther west that you go, higher totals the farther east, closer to Houston and the Gulf coastline. All right, until then, chilly out there right now, 40 degrees here in San Antonio. It is going to be a cold and cloudy day. High struggling to climb out of the 30s, so you will want to bundle up no matter what time you're headed out later on this afternoon. Notice your temperatures into the upcoming week, though, warmer with lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. All right, we talked about it earlier. We got more playoffs today. Number three, Detroit Lions. Shouts to Mike Osterhage, big fan of the Lions. They're going to be hosting the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in the NFC Divisional Round playoffs today, 2 p.m. Then, I know this is a big game, a lot of people are waiting for, Bills making their home field advantage, trying to push themselves into the AFC Championship for the first time since January 2021. And this year, Patrick Mahomes traveling for a playoff game for the first time in his career. That's actually a miraculous statistic. The Chiefs and the Bills. It's going to be a good one. And I know you're a big Chiefs fan, right? Can well, you explain? I'm a big Taylor Swift fan. Mm. So Bills fans attending today's game may Ooh. want to leave a blank space. Well done. Nicely done. In their stomachs. The stadium has unveiled food items inspired by the Chiefs' most famous fan. Of course, that's Taylor Swift. They include the Bad Blood Waffle Fries. Arguably, because, you know, Sarah Spivey's a fan, too. So let's calm down. <laughs> and the Karma Quesadilla. Nice. And for Bills fans who want nothing to do with NFL's most famous love story, there's always the Kansas City Bowl of Tears barbecue. Have you seen, uh, what's the Waffle Fries name again? The, the Bad Karma one? It, no, the Waffle Fries was the Bad Blood Waffle Bad Fries. Bad Blood Waffle Fries. Yeah. They look delicious. Really? Have all. I, I just saw the names of these. I didn't see the pictures. I, and you know what? Whenever you go places, and if you're Cowboys fans out there, I know a lot of families watching us are Cowboys fans, mm -hmm. you know it's a little more expensive at the stadiums. It's $24, oh but my like, gosh. hear me out. Okay. It is a lot of food. The like bad the waffle, blood, fries, waffle fries. Yeah. It's like a tray, a yeah. trough. It's a trough. Mm -hmm. right. yeah, there you go. So just, yeah, Everyone, you just need a trough of fries. Okay. At a game. So yeah. you think Chiefs are going to win? Yes. Okay. Do you think Taylor's gonna be there? 100%. It's very cold. Okay, she has a box. I'm know, not worried. There's a lot of snow. She's fine. Okay. All right, time <laughs> now, 625, 39 degrees. A company challenging consumers to go phone free for a whole month. Oh, I'd love to mm. do that. We'll tell you what the prize is after the break. Okay, yogurt company CG Dairy is willing to pay people $10,000. Ooh, that's more than I thought it would be to do their digital detox. Mm. No phone at all for an entire month. In addition to the cash, other prizes available include three months worth of CG's yogurt. This sounds delicious. And a smartphone lockbox for those willing to put down the phone. More information on CG's website. Can you imagine going no phone for a month and you don't win the 10K, you win three months of yogurt? I'd be livid. 
<laughs> it's so bad. I, I would say, if, but for our jobs, we both could be phone free. We yeah. also grew up without phones. Right. Like so I, could, it's not I would that, love to do that. Right. I would maybe want three months worth of, I don't know, Now, question, burgers? is it smartphone? Because like I, we could still use a house line. I don't know. Lots of questions. Yeah, lots of questions. Like I could do without the smartphone. Give me and a also, flip phone like, and Nokia. And also like people get on their laptops, no laptops involved. I would assume no laptops because you can, this is pretty much a computer. Okay. No, la pretty, no laptops yeah, then. I could do it. Time now, just about 630, 39 degrees. New Hampshire primary, just two days away, ahead in oh. our next half hour. We'll see how candidates are winning over voters. Good morning and welcome back and happy Sunday. It is 632 this morning. It's January 21st. Good morning. I'm going to be honest. Yesterday, it looked beautiful outside. It did not look beautiful. It did look beautiful. What day are blue we talking skies, about? The sun was out. But the, then when you, was the sun out? And then the, me, it was the sun out? The sun was out in the morning. Okay, yeah, I'll but take it. For the most of the day, it was cloudy. Yeah, but by you and I have different days. By lunch, I'm thank like, you. After three, first off, when football started, I was not leaving the apartment. So I, after the show, I was out and about. But then football started, I didn't look outside. Oh, it was, you couldn't go outside. No, because it was cold. It was a little breezy. The cloud cover, yeah, we managed to climb into the low 40s. That was it here in San Antonio yesterday. So it was a chilly start to the weekend, and it is still going to be chilly out there today because the cloud cover sticks around and rain chances increase before the day is done. The good news is not quite as cold, though, this morning compared to where we were this time yesterday. Most most of us above freezing, which is also a big difference from just 24 hours ago. 40 degrees here officially in town, 38 in Bulverde. It's 43 in Pleasanton. As you make your way off to the northwest, though, across portions of the hill country, the southern Edwards Plateau, we have seen thermometers fall to that 32 degree mark near Rock Springs, as well as the Lost Maples area. But yes, still a chilly start, and it is going to be chilly throughout the remainder of this Sunday. Now we talk about the rain chances. We focus on that as we continue on, especially later on this afternoon and even more so tonight. We are expecting rain coverage to increase more widespread rain overnight and into early Monday. You can see we are quiet out there right now. I do think a few sprinkles will be possible here this morning. You can see temperatures not budging a whole lot in the upper 30s as we take a look at your case that 12 hour forecast by lunchtime. A few scattered showers are expected and then again that increase increases in coverage by late afternoon and even more so this evening. So if you are stepping out for any Sunday plans, mainly throughout the second half of the day, a good idea to at least take the rain gear with you and you're going to want to hold on to it, especially by the Monday morning drive. 80% chance for more widespread rain first thing tomorrow, but then we start to clear things out and dry things out a bit more into Monday afternoon. After that, though, we're not finished with the scattered rain chances that actually is going to continue both Tuesday and into Wednesday. So we have multiple chances here to pick up on a healthy drink of water in the days ahead. Notice your temperatures trending warmer after today. We're actually going to see a warm front move through into our Monday. So lows come up into the 50s and highs climb into the 60s as early as Tuesday. So once again, we'll get you the latest version of Futurecast. What we'll be monitoring here coming up in about 10 minutes, guys. Mia, thank you. A convenience store worker in Humble is dead after police say he confronted two men who stole a bag of chips. Those men are now wanted for capital murder. Take a look at your screen right now. Just before 1130 Friday, this surveillance video captured these two men in black hoodies entering the store when one of the suspects then appears to put a bag of chips in his pants. One of the workers then follows the suspects to the parking lot, getting in a fight. This is the last video investigators have before police say the employee followed them to that person's car. Detectives found the victim's car down the street with bullet holes in the windshield and the back passenger window. We've lost uh, a great citizen who was just trying to work and do their job. And instead we have uh, two people that also uh, have ruined their lives because they will be going to jail. The police are still searching for the two suspects investigating. Say if you catch someone stealing, don't try to be the hero. Man behind bars now. Just one day after San Antonio police found an 85-year-old man's body during a welfare check. Look what we know right now. On Friday, police checked an apartment near the intersection of Piper's Creek Street and Calabra Road. Inside, they found that 85-year-old man dead and a 57-year-old woman injured. Now, we do know the suspect detained arrested 45-year-old James Barber. 
Uh, this is still an ongoing investigation, but Barbara was arrested at the scene facing a murder charge as well as aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Still working to figure out what kind of condition the 57 year old woman was in when they found her. We're still also waiting for the names of those victims. Well, crime is up in San Antonio, but not every kind of crime. Fortunately, as this chart shows, homicides are one of the area where crime is actually down from year to year. That's right. Even still, they're higher than they've been in recent past. Gare Berger diving into the 2023 crime statistics that San Antonio police unveiled this week. Between 2022 and 2023, crime overall in San Antonio went up 2%, driven by one crime in particular. Car thefts jumped by more than half, with more than 19,000 vehicles stolen in all. Various Kia and Hyundai models made up four out of every 10 cars boosted. What's driving that was that TikTok video that came out instructing people on how to steal the Kia. Police Chief William McManus says cars are stolen for a variety of reasons, often to be used in other crimes. I can't tell you the number of times that we've gotten a, gotten a plate number, have run it to find out that, that it's stolen. To the chief, the good news is that violent crime is down compared to the year before. Murders are down, certain assaults are down. Homicides in particular plummeted from 231 down to 165, the department says. But how much is that really? The spike in 2022 was driven largely by a single mass casualty event in which 53 migrants being smuggled in a stifling hot trailer died. And though 2023's tally is much lower, historical data from the FBI shows it's still among the most deadly years since the mid-90s. I've always said that homicides are, a, 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 a lot of it has to do with risky behavior. Of the known factors for last year's homicides, arguments topped the list. The family and intimate partners were second. But for many homicides, the cause was unknown. McManus says they could close more violent crimes if more witnesses would share what they know. Trying to, to um, eliminate as much as we can the fear of talking with the police, of working with the police, of reporting to the police things that are happening in their neighborhoods, that's the challenge. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, and this is a big one, tensions in the Middle East seemingly aimed at United States military personnel. It was a big situation that developed yesterday. This is what we know right now. United States Central Command announcing that Iranian-backed militias launched a barrage of ballistic missiles and rockets at Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq. It left several U.S. personnel being evaluated for traumatic brain injuries. Luckily, most of those incoming missiles and rockets, they were intercepted by air defense systems at the base. Now, this base used both by Iraq and U.S. militaries, but some of those missiles did hit the base. Now, the latest attack, this is the largest of the more than 140 attacks on United States forces in Iraq and Syria since just mid-October. The United States says this has all been carried out by Iranian-backed militia groups. Microsoft security team investigating how a Russian hacking group accessed the emails of some of the company's top employees. So Microsoft says they detected the attack on its systems about a week ago. The hackers initially accessed a few senior leaders email accounts in late November by using a password spray attack in an attempt to hack into a mass number of accounts. Microsoft is still in the process of notifying those victims whose emails were compromised. And on this day in history, on January 21st, 1977, President Jimmy Carter granted an unconditional pardon to thousands of men who dodged the United States military draft during Vietnam War. Ahead of the 1976 presidential election, then candidate Jimmy Carter promised to pardon those who evaded the draft as a way to close the nation's book on Vietnam. The day after his inauguration, Carter did keep his word, pardon those draft dodgers who had not committed violent offenses. And with the New Hampshire primary just two days away, Nikki Haley and Donald Trump are on the campaign trail making their final pitches to voters. That's right. Here's ABC's Melissa Don with the latest from Manchester, New Hampshire. This morning, the final sprint to the New Hampshire primary is on. Nikki Haley and Donald Trump crisscrossing the state, hoping to sway voters ahead of Tuesday. 
Former President Donald Trump holding a rally joined by leaders from Nikki Haley's home state, including current South Carolina Governor Henry McMaster. If you want a person that puts America first, there's only one person that you can vote for, and that's Donald J. Trump. And you saw that for four years. In a snub to Haley, the former president already picked up a major endorsement from South Carolina Senator Tim Scott, whom she appointed to the Senate while she was governor. Of course, I was disappointed. He's got to live with that decision. I don't have to live with that decision. Haley scooping up support of her own while not officially endorsing any candidate. Asa Hutchinson, who has suspended his campaign, throwing his support behind Haley in Tuesday's primary. Posting on X saying anyone who believes Donald Trump will unite this country has been asleep over the last eight years. A win on Tuesday could help fast track Trump to a third GOP presidential nomination, though polls show Haley trailing close behind. I am voting 100 percent Republican. Trump all the way. I think Nikki is the right person who should hopefully be able to bridge the divide. Meanwhile, Governor Ron DeSantis is already in South Carolina weeks ahead of Super Tuesday, hoping to gain uh, early ground. As this thing turns, you know, we're going to be um, in a good situation. As for the write-in campaign for Joe Biden, a handful of volunteers and local officials gathered in the freezing cold to encourage voters to write in the president's name on the ballot. DeSantis is now heading back to New Hampshire after spending the weekend campaigning in South Carolina. Meantime, Nikki Haley holding several campaign stops today and Trump expected to host yet another rally here tonight. Melissa Adon, ABC News, Manchester, New Hampshire. Well, back here at home, we have two leading essays today. So we're trying to figure out who's going to be in D.C. for the next, you know, be the next president. And... Well, local leaders, they're trying to figure out who's going to D.C. for the classic SA to D.C. trip. That is where local leaders go to our nation's capital to advocate for causes close to San Antonio's heart. A lot of federal funding in the works and what that means for San Antonio. So we're going to be talking to the president and CEO of the San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. And then at 830, we're going to be talking to the CEO of Culinaria. Obviously, Restaurant Week is underway. We're going to talk about why that is so important. Yes, it means great deals for you and your family when you go to the restaurants, but why that is so important. And look, and just last we're gonna year. we're going to have some food samples? Maybe. 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 We'll the food samples are, are goodies, yes. But look, in the last year, we've talked about how so many small businesses out there, so many restaurants, they've had to close. Costs are going up. Right. People aren't going out to eat, understandably so. It's tough times out there. So we're going to talk about why Restaurant Week is so important, not only for the families out there, but also for local small businesses. It's a win-win. Win-win. Time now, 644, 39 degrees. We'll be back with Mia and her forecast. All right, welcome back everyone. Your time is 647. So it is a cold start, not quite as cold as what we saw 24 hours ago, but still you'll definitely want to bundle up if you're stepping out this Sunday. And also, especially if you're heading out later on this afternoon and this evening, you will want to pack the rain gear. That is going to be a big story for today, and even more so into tonight. Showers developing, maybe even a few rumbles of thunder later on tonight as well. Becoming more widespread through the overnight and even into early Monday, pockets of heavier rain embedded within that that activity is certainly possible, something we'll need to monitor, especially when it comes to some ponding on the sides of roadways for the Monday morning drive. So again, it will be a soggy start to the day tomorrow as well, but then most of that moves east into the afternoon, just an isolated chance for rain Monday afternoon, but not finished with the scattered rain chances that continues through at least the middle of this week and warming temperatures. So we've got a lot to talk about and dive into the forecast here right now. 40 degrees here in San Antonio. It is cloudy out there feeling just a few degrees colder feels like 37 winds out of the northeast at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. Most of us are above freezing, so that is the good news starting to get a little less convinced that we'll see that light icy glaze on elevated surfaces potentially this morning for places like Kerrville, Bandera, just because temperatures are well above freezing and those thermometers likely not going to budge too terribly much over the next couple of hours because of the cloud cover in place. But you'll notice for places like Rock Springs up there in Edwards, County, maybe even into northern Valverde County right now, those thermometers have been able to drop into the low 30s. That is where we are monitoring for the potential for a little bit of that light icy glaze in the form of some freezing drizzle that could attach to some of those elevated surfaces, car windshields, street signs, things of that nature. Most of us going to miss out. No travel impacts or any major impacts expected, so that is the good news there. That will transition to just cold liquid rain later on this morning as temperatures start to warm a little bit in 
in those locations. But as we zoom this out and take a look at the big picture, you can see we're not just the only area here dealing with some of that activity this morning. Some snow across portions of New Mexico transitioning to that cold liquid rain, especially uh, southern Arizona, even stretching over to the west coast near San Francisco and Los Angeles. That's all associated with that low pressure system. The disturbance that's approaching the state of Texas as we speak, it's going to be bringing in some upper level energy throughout the remainder of the day and even into our Monday, which is what's going to help kickstart some of this rain activity. So you can see by about 11 o'clock, especially along and west of I-35 near Uvalde, Rock Springs, Del Rio, a few showers already expected. That's going to increase in coverage later on this afternoon by about 3 p.m. closer to San Antonio, even Pleasanton, Gonzales. We could see some scattered showers there. So the umbrella definitely needed later on this evening and even more so tomorrow morning. You can see the radar is expected to increase in coverage and fill in a bit more widespread rain. A few non severe thunderstorms through the overnight and by morning drive time tomorrow before we start to dry things out into Monday afternoon. So plan on giving yourself some extra time out the door tomorrow morning and take the rain gear with you there too. 60% chance for rain into Tuesday, 40% into Wednesday. By the time all is said and done, upwards of two to three inches possible closer to the San Antonio area. So much needed rain headed our direction. We'll continue to keep you posted on that. Notice your temperatures warming into the upcoming week. Lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. For the sixth year in a row, San Antonio has been named one of the best places to live and work as a filmmaker. Alamo City was one of 25 major United States and Canadian cities on the list, along with three others from Texas that include El Paso, Dallas, and Austin. And some of the reasons San Antonio made the list was the growing film culture, free permitting on 250 city-owned locations, the iconic SA Film Festival will take place this July, and the deadline to submit your own film, if there are filmmakers out there, February 9th, so you got to hurry up and do that. If you need something new to watch, CNN has released a list of the best watches so far for 2024. For movies, the new Mean Girls in theaters, killing it at the box office. Uh, ooh, I saw this on Netflix. Kevin Hart's new action comedy, Lift, and producer's fan favorite this month, Saltburn. Saltburn was really good. On Amazon Prime. Not for families. Not for families. Not for families, but a... For adults, great movie. <laughs> it's All right. a family show. It's a family <laughs> For shows, True Detective Night Country made its return mm. to HBO Max with uh, Jodie Foster, Woody Harrelson, and Matthew McConaughey. Can't be bad. And season 28 of The Bachelor premieres tomorrow on ABC. I think we were obligated to say that one because it's yeah. on ASAP. <laughs> I'm not a Bachelor person. No, I do want to watch uh, The New True Detective. I watched all the other seasons. Mm -hmm. My girlfriend and I were supposed to watch it yesterday, so if you're watching, I'm sorry. Uh, but there's playoff football to watch. Football. Yeah. Football. There's only so many playoffs. Uh, it was a great game. So um, I recently watched Boys in the Boat. Okay. Excellent. Okay, one to Family ten. Family movie. We... Oh, I would say like an eight. Okay. It's very good. Um, I started Killers of the Flower Moon last night. Okay. Very good. Long movie? Long movie. It's okay. one of those where I'll watch couple, uh, over a couple of days. There. Of course, Oppenheimer. I just saw Oppenheimer. Oh, fantastic. Fantastic. I, they have to win the Oscar. There's a lot of good movies, but that yeah. one. Media awards are way over my head. So wow. I, I, that's my Super Bowl, Max. Okay, yeah. that's it. That's fair. All right, time now, 6.56, 38 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, one final look at temperatures for this hour. 40 degrees here in San Antonio, so a chilly start. 30s for places like Holotus, Bernie, Comfort, Kerrville, even Rio Medina checking in at 38 right now. Plan for a cold and cloudy day. Again, temperatures are going to struggle to climb out of the upper 30s because of the cloud cover and also the increasing rain chances. So a few sprinkles this morning leading way to scattered showers later on this afternoon. Widespread rain is expected overnight tonight and early Monday morning that continues through the Monday morning commute, clearing out a bit into Monday afternoon, but still scattered rain continues Tuesday and into Wednesday, just isolated by the second half of the upcoming week. Notice your temperatures after today, much warmer, 50s in the morning, 60s into the afternoons. I think everybody is very excited about the warming trend, considering what we saw last week. This morning, late early afternoon, if you still have those plant coverings on, like I do, take them off because they're going to need that rain. Great advice. Thank you, Mia. Thank you, Mia. We're going to take an hour-long break for Good Morning America. We'll see you back here at 8 a.m. See y'all at 8. Live from KSAT 12.
Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning. All right, we are taking a live look out of the Alamo City. 8 a.m., 39 degrees. It is already much warmer than what we saw yesterday. So, will it continue to warm up? And when will we see rain? We're going to check in with Mia Montgomery in just a few moments. But for now, thank you so much for starting your Sunday with us. It is 8 o'clock this Sunday. It is January 21st. Good morning. Good morning. So, yesterday, I'm going to be honest. Weather was not great. Not great. Yeah. Did I, you end up making it out and no, about? No. Okay. No, I like ran one errand. Nice. And, you know, uh, it was it was definitely a couch. Football. Football. Playoff football and Spurs go. Spurs go. They won. Whoop whoop. Go Spurs. Whoop, whoop. All right. Eight eight wins. We're on, we're on the way to double digits. <laughs> we're doing things. Thought we'd have forty, but we're aiming for ten. All right. Me and Montgomery. Speaking of forty, it is almost forty degrees. I was gonna say, you know what else we're aiming for? Above freezing temperatures. <laughs> and thank goodness, most of us in and around the San Antonio area are well above freezing this Sunday morning. A big difference than what we saw this time yesterday. Lost Maples, though, the exception. Even over into Rock Springs and Edwards County, down to or just below that thirty-two degree mark. But for everybody else, while it is still cold, we are in the upper thirties and low 40. So 40 degrees right now officially here in town. 36 in comfort. It's 41 over in New Braunfels. Good morning to you. 42 out east in Gonzales. Okay, so today it is going to be a cold day. We've got the cloud cover in place. That's not going anywhere. Temperatures are going to struggle to climb out of the upper 30s in many locations later on this afternoon, but also something we'll be monitoring even more so this evening and tonight increasing rain chances. So first off, right off the bat, if you're stepping out later on today, definitely pack the umbrella. You can see we're pretty quiet in and around San Antonio. Not anything to talk about yet on authority radar, but I do anticipate that changing later on this morning by lunchtime, about a 40% potential to already find some widely separated showers across portions of the area. Again, highs in the upper 30s and low 40s expected. Temperatures are not going to fluctuate a whole lot throughout the day compared to where we are even right now. About a 60% potential for some rain later on this evening by about 8 o'clock. By the way, that rain is only going to increase in coverage later on tonight and into tomorrow morning. So as we sleep, can't completely rule out a few isolated rumbles of thunder maybe a few pockets of heavier rain embedded within some of that activity tomorrow morning stepping out for the morning drive. It is going to be a messy start. Something to think about as you're already starting to plan out your Monday. Give yourself a little bit of extra time out the door with that widespread morning rain, but then that moves east by lunchtime just isolated into the afternoon. Not finished though with the rain chances after that scattered through midweek and temperatures are going to be warming up. So we're going to get you a full look at that forecast and your future cast timing it all out coming up in just a few guys. Thank you, Mia. New this morning, a restaurant up in flames overnight on San Antonio's west side. So take a look. This is what we know right now. Firefighters on the scene telling us this unfolded around 2.30 this morning. This is the 1200 block of South Stars and Mora. Now, crews able to knock the fire down fairly quickly, but here's the thing. The building sustaining heavy damage. Luckily, no injuries reported. Right now, fire investigators still working, trying to figure out how this all started. And new this morning, San Antonio police say a man was found ejected from his vehicle on, on I-10. This was the scene a little after three this morning on the main lanes of I-10 westbound and Hebner Road. An operator from TechStock came across a single vehicle crash, that truck there, and found a man on the other side of the highway. The operator called EMS and SAPD. That man was pronounced dead at the scene. It's unclear what led up to this crash. Both north and southbound lanes of I-10 were closed briefly this morning. And speaking of crashes, after the death of their daughter, a local family is calling for our community and our state and really our country to stop drinking and driving. Just one week ago, the 26-year-old died in a wrong way crash on I-35. Police arrested the other driver for suspected DWI intoxication assault. It's a situation we come across and we talk about all too often. Our Avery Everett shows us how this family story is far from the only one. He, he took away my daughter's life. He took away a mother from her son. A family this morning devastated after the death of their daughter. It's been really hard. Nothing's the same without her. Now, they're calling on the San Antonio community to change the culture of drinking and driving. It's a choice. I feel like it's a choice. We all have a choice to do that. 26-year-old Ulyssa Valero died one week ago. She and two others were driving on I-35. That's when another car, traveling the wrong way, 
hit them head on. San Antonio police arrested the driver of that vehicle for suspected DWI intoxication assault. I don't think it's fair for people to be driving and drinking. Since 2017, the Texas Department of Transportation has reported that this state leads the nation for fatal and wrong way crashes. And for DWI crashes, stats for Texas show that on average, three people die per day a year. It really hurts us. She didn't deserve to be, to be her, what happened to her. The Valero family now is missing one. And two-year-old Christian is now missing his mom. My rest of my family, they will be there for us, for my grandson. But still, I think that he deserved to have his mother. He's the one that's going to keep us going with her. It's a tragic story that keeps on happening here in Texas. But remember, in this state, we have Bentley's law that went into effect on September 1st, and it makes convicted drunk drivers have to pay child support if they killed a parent of a minor. Now, we know in this case so far, that suspect has only been arrested. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. In your morning headlines, there are growing fears that the conflict, the multiple conflicts in the Middle East, could spur a regional war. And of course, the United States would be heavily involved. Here's the thing. In just the last 24 hours, the United States Central Command announcing that Iranian-backed militias launched a barrage of ballistic missiles and rockets at the Al-Assad Air Base in western Iraq. And it's left several U.S. personnel being evaluated for traumatic brain injuries. Now, the attacks have been ongoing, but before this, it was really just drones. The missiles are an increase, and luckily, the majority of them, the missiles and the rockets, they were intercepted by air defense systems at the base. Now, this base used both by Iraq and United States militaries, but some of these rockets did impact the base. Now, the latest attack, this appears to be the largest of the more than 140 attacks that we have seen on United States forces in the Middle East, and this stemming from mid-October. The United States, again, solidifying that these attacks, they have been from Iranian-backed militia groups. Well, a handful of House members are sounding the alarm about a dietary supplement they say is dangerous and linked to seizures, overdoses, and deaths. They are asking the FDA to review Tianeptine and determine its presence here in the U.S. The FDA previously warned about the supplement's side effects, usually marketed to help and uh, it's as an antidepressant, and it's a use around the world. But the United States is looking at whether it should prohibit its used for medical treatment. Some have called Tianeptane, quote, gas station heroin. And lawmakers say recent reports indicate it's extremely addictive and stopping its use can often trigger sim similar symptoms uh, from withdrawals similar to opioids. Back here at home, the Greater San Antonio Chamber, they've spearheaded the annual SA to DC trip. It's an advocacy trip and it's been going on for about 40 years now. Thousands of local business leaders and of elected officials. They go, they meet face to face, they talk to members of Congress, administration officials, and Pentagon leaders. And it's really important because they advocate for our San Antonio priorities. That's why joining us in today's leading essay segment is Jeff Webster, President and CEO of Greater San Antonio Chamber of Commerce. Good morning, sir. Th sir. Thank you so much for joining us. Hey, good morning. Thanks for inviting me to join y'all for a great conversation. So the SA to DC trip, it is something we've talked about extensively on this show. But for those who are just joining us, talk about the history, talk about its importance. You know, this, this goes back, you mentioned 40 years, really 45 years we've been making this trip. COVID interrupted it a little bit, but it started out just advocating for our defense missions here in, in San Antonio and all our military missions. And over the years, we've added other things, you know, education, transportation, infrastructure, it, it has turned into an amazing trip. And it's one of those trips that results in actions, funding for uh, VIA and for transit, for our airport, for our defense department, for our educational and research institutions. It's one of the best things this chamber does each and every year. And we're proud to take another delegation up uh, February 5th through 8th. We'll be there, and unfortunately you mentioned cold weather earlier, be a little chilly, but we'll be there on behalf of San Antonio with about a 180 people this year, I think, making the trip. So we're grateful for all those attending. Okay, sir, what is on the agenda for this specific trip? What do you guys really want to advocate to lawmakers? You know, there's a couple of things. And one of those that tops the list every year is our infrastructure here in our community, continuing to get support for aviation, defense department, higher education, K through 12. Port San Antonio is very engaged with our military there, with the mission and the expansion, updating buildings. 
So that's one of the things that are top of our list. Other parts will be supporting VIA. VIA has got two uh, routes, advanced rapid transit, that are going to go north, south, east, west, continue to get funding and leveraging that to deliver this to the community here in San Antonio. And, and our airport, everybody's followed a little bit of what we're doing at the San Antonio International Airport. Jesus, Signs, and team are doing some amazing things and got an expansion plan. There is participation from the federal government. We're going to continue to leverage that to bring this expansion, which will result in more direct flights, a better, stronger airport, and a better, I think, visitor experience uh, for everybody that comes to our airport. And then we'll be there also advocating for, for health care, education. And so we're expecting a great trip. It's always very fruitful. And we come back with results almost every year. Glad you talked about the, the fruitfulness of this. And obviously, we talked about some of these broad topics. But are there any specific wins that you can think of from these trips that you know some of our viewers may not understand that this trip is what spurred these huge wins for our city? Yeah, so that's always a great question. And I'll be honest, people always say, oh, this is a little trip, a fun trip for everybody. Yes, we have fun. But more importantly, we have brought money home for the airport. We have brought money home for VIA historically, not, the, not just once, but on multiple years. Our infrastructure, our bridges and roadways, the federal funding, you know, we advocate to bring Texas and, and as it results into San Antonio, we were a donor state and we have worked to make sure that increases back to Texas, the amount of money we have to spend from that federal match into our projects. Look at those projects on 1604, 281, I-10, 35. There's some great things happening. So we're going to tie it into the the VIA, getting things done that the city has a long-term goal for. We'll bring home some additional dollars for our military missions and support, both for staffing and increasing missions, we believe. And then we'll, we'll work really hard on getting the airport worked on. So I think it's going to be a great trip. We've always got education at the forefront of what we're doing and supporting our K-12 and our higher ed. And you look at our universities here, they're doing some amazing things, and a lot of it's through federal funding that we advocate for to bring home. Okay, before we wrap things up here, the trip is set for February 5th through 8th this year. So who is already going and can people still get involved? Thank you, that's a great question because yes, you can still sign up to attend and join, uh, on the trip. We welcome you, thanks for putting up the link right there. Please join us, we, uh, the hotel is full. We've got additional rooms now set aside. Uh, we're excited about that. So we'll, we'll have the trip, you can still sign up and uh, what I think we want to leave with everybody is this is something that is important to our city. I got to thank our, 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 our leads. Uh, uh, First Day Foundation has made this an amazing trip. One thing we've added this year, First Day Foundation has made it. We're going to have a special event for the state of Texas congressional delegation honoring Kay Granger and the service she's done for the state of Texas. And we have almost a majority of our reps across the entire state of Texas attending which gives us that chance to personally associate, develop rapport with, and advocate for the things we're working on. So this is going to be a great trip. We're looking for a really good time. Jeff Webster, President and CEO of the Chamber, thank you so much for joining us. Of course, anyone who's interested in learning more about it or participating, we're going to have the link on KSAT.com throughout the morning. Time now, 8-13, 39 degrees. Oh, 39 degrees. Some advice. Mm. If you have all those covers on your plants, go ahead and take them off. We see a look at live cam outside. There it is. Because even though it's cold and the sun's starting to mm, shine just a little there. bit, uh, make sure you get all those coverings off the plants because we're going to get some much needed rain starting later today and our plants really need it. Mia's going to explain how much when we come back. Welcome back and good Sunday morning to you all. It is a cold start, not quite as cold as what we saw this time yesterday, but you'll definitely want to bundle up if you're stepping out for any Sunday plans. Temperatures again likely struggling to climb out of the 30s later on this afternoon in some locations, but you're also going to want to pack the rain gear. That is the big story that we'll be following throughout the remainder of the day and even more so tonight and into Monday morning. Increasing rain chances. I think we could see a few scattered showers develop later on this afternoon, continue into this evening and then 
and widespread rain is expected to fill in across south central Texas as we sleep tonight and as a lot of us are headed off to work and school first thing tomorrow morning. So I want to time that out for you. Look at authority radar though right now shows that we are pretty quiet across the region, but I do anticipate again that to change, especially by and just after lunchtime. As we zoom this out and take a look at the bigger picture, you can see already we have some rain moving into far western Texas near the Permian Basin, even some snow across portions of the Panhandle, more snow in the mountains of New Mexico near Albuquerque, where temperatures are a little bit warmer, plenty of rain near Phoenix, even into a good chunk of California near both Los Angeles as well as San Francisco. Watch what happens here in our neck of the woods as we advance this advance this on in time throughout the remainder of our Sunday. Again, still just a few sprinkles possible by about 10 to 11 o'clock, but by and after lunchtime, this is 3 p.m. We could start to see a few scattered showers get up and running near San Antonio, Pleasanton, even closer to the New Braunfels, Seguin, Gonzales area, and even out west closer to the Rio Grande, Uvalde, Brackettville, Del Rio, starting to see a few showers develop. That's going to continue on into this evening by 7 p.m. If you have any dinner time plans, out and about take the rain gear with you and then as we head into the overnight hours this is midnight tonight more widespread coverage is expected some pockets of heavier rain embedded within this activity and a few rumbles of thunder certainly possible that heavy rain continues in spots especially across the coastal plains even here in San Antonio by the time we are waking up and stepping out for the morning commute tomorrow so plan on giving yourself a little bit of extra time out the door take the umbrella with with you and send the rain gear with the kids to school. Notice though, as we head into the lunchtime hour tomorrow, a lot of that is already tracking eastward, moving out of our region closer to Houston. We're just going to keep an isolated chance for a few more showers in the forecast tomorrow afternoon, but we're not finished with the rain chances at that point. We've got about a 60% potential to find some additional scattered rain on Tuesday and a 40% chance as we head into Wednesday. By the time all is said and done, a healthy drink of water expected for South Central Texas here in San Antonio. It's still looking like we could find upwards of two to even three inches of rain. Generally lower totals the farther west that you go closer to the Rio Grande up to about an inch there and higher totals the farther east closer to Houston. So something we certainly will be monitoring for you until then. It is chilly 40 degrees right now here in San Antonio 30s for places like Bernie Comfort as well as Kerrville. Taking a look at your case that 12 hour forecast that cloud cover sticks with us throughout the day. A high temperature right around 40 degrees with those increasing rain chances. We'll monitor the widespread activity through the overnight and first thing tomorrow. So yes, give yourself some extra time out the door. Know that we could see some ponding on the sides of area roadways tomorrow. Will likely be a bit of a messy commute. Temperatures though after today looking a lot better and warmer. Lows in the 50s, highs in the 60s. Fantastic. I'm excited. 70 and sunny. Come on. No, but we have January. a lot of rain in there. We've got, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just got to make it through the rain. <laughs> we got though. rain. We've got warmer temperatures. See, glass half empty, glass no, half full. No, I'm saying glass is full because mm. I want the rain. Well, the glass is going to be full because of the rain. Look at that. Look at that. Nice. We like to have fun here. I yes. like it. All right, time now. Just about 822, 39 degrees. Picture this lip balm. Mm. But instead of your regular cherry or mint scent, it smells like wings and ranch. Ah. So kissable. More about Burt's Bees new lip balm after the break. All right, let's take a look. I don't even know how to follow that one up. Take a look at these blotto numbers. Pick three, seven, zero, nine, fireball two, daily four, zero, zero, six, eight, fireball nine. Cash five, seven, eight, sixteen, thirty two, thirty three, Texas Lotto, three, ten, twenty three, thirty, thirty four. 40. Let's look at the Powerball number, 16, 31, 34, 47, 65, Powerball 10, Power of Play 3. Good luck. Good morning and welcome back. All right. You're either going to love this or hate this. We're talking about Burt's Bees new lip balm, which, look, I'm a Burt's Bees fan. Same. Uh, I don't know if I'm a fan of this one. Your lip gloss is going to taste like ranch dressing. I think I'm a fan. Okay. <laughs> love, I'm, a, I'm a ranch girl. So... Uh, Hidden Valley Ranch and Burt's Beefs teaming up for a whole line of lip balms featuring the flavors you'd find in a basket of chicken wings. These flavors include Hidden Valley Ranch, Buffalo Sauce, mm. does that burn your lips? Crunchy Celery, I'm out on that one, and Fresh Carrot. Fresh Carrot might be good too. Okay, so it started as a joke a couple years ago. Then fans went wild over an April Fool's post. 
on social media, but the joke, well, turned into a real life boom for the companies. Here's the thing. I, I'm, I'm Would you kiss to, your girlfriend I'm if she put the ranch on her? I'm starting to doubt society because <laughs> these sold out in less than a day. I mean, it makes a great gift. It does. It's a great gift. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, I got, I got the ranch uh, lip balm. Yeah. I mean, but then... So like I are love you coming, ranch. Are you going to be coming in hot with the the ranch lip balm? <laughs> well, I don't know. I just feel mm. like I do so much to mask the ranch that you already that eat. I eat. Okay. With you know mints counterproductive. And, yeah, yeah. So okay. We'll All right. Well, 8:26, 39 degrees. Speaking of food, restaurant week is undergoing right now. So if you haven't been, great opportunity for you and the family. We have two special guests joining us in studio. In fact, one of Sarah Costa's favorite chefs in the Alamo City. And you can actually smell what he's cooking. No, it is not The Rock. He's in the it kitchen right now. Chef Leo. He is in the kitchen. We're going to bring you a special leading essay in just a few moments. Good morning and happy Sunday. I'm Max Massey. I'm Sarah Costa. It's January 21st, and we're super excited. We are. Because we have a chef with sticks and stone uh -huh. in the kitchen well, right we now. do. I thought you were just excited because we have Mia Montgomery joining us this morning. Well, always for me <laughs> as well. But I'm excited because we have food in just a bit. We got a whole lot of good news going on. Warmer temperatures after today. It's still going to be cold and also rain chances. I want to take you right to live cam because I'd say within the past 15 minutes, we've really started to see an uptick and a little bit of drizzle and some sprinkles out there. You can see the rain on live cam. It's going to be a little dreary in spots uh, and really we were showing you the radar earlier. You couldn't see a ton out there on the radar. A lot of times when we have sprinkles and some drizzle, the water particles are too fine or they're falling below the radar beam for authority radar to pick it up. So we look at visibility values and you can see near Port SA on the southwest side visibility has come down. Same out in Pleasanton, even Seguin starting to see those visibility values trend down too. So that's really where we can find where we have some of this mist and drizzle in place. Temperatures as we were also talking about a bit earlier, not quite as cold as where we were 24 hours ago, but still plenty cold out there. You're definitely going to want to bundle up and take the umbrella with you. 40 right now here in town. Same on the south side. Stinson 41 in New Braunfels. Current temperature up in comfort sitting at 36 degrees. It is going to be a chilly day because of the cloud cover and increasing rain chances. Thermometer is not going to fluctuate a whole lot over the next several hours. Upper 30s, maybe low 40s at best. By about noon to the early afternoon, 40% chance for scattered showers. We're expecting an uptick in that activity. 50% potential by 3, 4, 5 o'clock. And that just increases in coverage later on this evening and even more so overnight. We are expecting widespread rain, a few non-severe thunderstorms to push across south central Texas. That is going to linger into the Monday morning drive. So that's something to plan ahead for into tomorrow morning you're definitely going to want. Yes, the rain gear and also some extra time heading out the door. Not finished with the rain chances after tomorrow. Still scattered rain expected Tuesday and for some into Wednesday as well. Warming temperatures there too. We're going to get you another look at that future cast. Time it all out for you. Coming up in just a few, guys. Thank you, Mia. We now know one man behind bars after San Antonio police found an elderly man, an 85-year-old man, dead during a welfare check. So investigators checked the apartment in the 7900 block of Piper's Creek on Friday. Inside, they found that 85 year old man dead and they also found an injured 57 year old woman. And this man who you see on your screen right now, 45 year old James Barber was arrested. He was arrested at the scene. He is now facing a murder charge as well as an aggravated assault with deadly weapon charge. We're still working to figure out what kind of condition the 57 year old is in and how they found her. We're still also waiting to learn the names of the victims. All San Antonio ISD schools were shut down on Thursday and Friday due to district-wide heating issues. We received an update to those conditions yesterday evening. A district official told Case that every single campus has been checked and visited this weekend. Crews are working through the weekend to ensure students stay warm when they return to class Monday morning. Superintendent Jaime Aquino will remain in communication with every principal about the level of readiness for school on Monday. And if we learn of any closures or delays between now and then, we will give you an update on air and online. 
Well, for the 12th year in a row, Culinaria is hosting its biannual event, Restaurant Weeks. It goes from January 15th until January 27th. More than 100 local restaurants participating in the event. And not only is that great for you, local families watching, but it is also great for our local restaurants. Oh my gosh, it smells so good in here. So joining us in today's leading us seg oh, hey essay guys. segment. <laughs> good morning, guys. Suzanne Toronto with Culinar Culinaria and Chef Leo Davila, chef and owner of San Antonio Eateries Sticks and Stone. Thank you so much for coming and cooking for us this morning. Y'all come on over. Yeah, scooch thanks for having us. And, and scooch the food yeah. in. Yeah, scooch it. <laughs> really just yeah. put the food in front of Sarah. So Thank yeah, you. For, for those who have not been joining us in the morning, Sarah has been talking about this restaurant for a week now, not knowing that not Chef knowing. Leo was going to be joining us. It looks fantastic. You actually made this in our kitchen. Yes. Fantastic. So what are we looking at right now? Yeah, so this is a honey walnut shrimp. Um, it plays a little homage to my family. Uh, my great aunt owned four or five American Chinese restaurants in the city. And this is one of those classic dishes. I never grew up really liking shrimp. And then I had this kind of on my culinary uh, graduation party and I was like, I fell in love. So I've been spending years trying to recreate it, talking to family and I think we finally nailed it. That is amazing. Okay, so Suzanne, CEO of Culinaria, how important is Culinaria for the city? Oh my goodness. Listen, Restaurant Weeks was started to fulfill a really slow period during travel and tourism. And for restaurants, when these kind of down months, so August and January were our first priority, just because a lot of people after the holidays in January specifically, they're like, I'm broke. I spent all my money on right. Christmas mm -hmm. and I spent way too much. And so this is a great way to get out, support local restaurants. And it's super important right now, just because it is a really slow period for restaurants. And so what it does is it gets people in the door. It's a fixed price. You won't break the bank. And it's a lot of food. I mean, this is just one of his courses. Oh, this is one. So, yes. This is one. So, <laughs> so highlighting these three course prefix menus, and there's a lot of choices. I mean, I went to Leo's the other night, and it was phenomenal. And I was so full, I thought I was just going to die. And the food kept coming. And I was like, are you sure this is only $40? And so... It's a really great opportunity to support everyone. You know, restaurants have really gone through a really tough time. You know, not only did we have a pandemic, but then, you know, over the summer, it was the surface of the sun yeah, outside yeah. and mm -hmm. people just wanted to go home. They were all just dying from the heat. And so this is a great way to get out and support those locals. I mean, more than anything, you know, it's really great to honor all of the local culture that goes into the food in San Antonio. Our historical relevance with food is the best in the country. And and so really celebrating those confluence of cultures that are interwoven into San Antonio's food scene is something that is just really, really important to get out there and support and make sure that these guys really stay for a really long time and they open yes. multiple restaurants, especially Leo, because his food is so good. So I can good. barely stand it. Like I could eat there every day. So, you know. Yeah, really working with people like Leo and getting out there and supporting locals just so important in particular to San Antonio because we love this city and we love all the talent that's here. My husband and I are huge fans of Culinaria because he's a food snob and so you know when he, we go to these restaurants and it's like oh this is actually very affordable yes and I highly recommend going out but Leo when my husband went to y'all's restaurant <laughs> so they are a gluten-free restaurant yes. he didn't know yeah. I knew what I was doing because I'm gluten free, and he was like, "This is gluten free," and he's like, "I couldn't even tell." He's like, "This is some of the, this is one of the best meals I've had in a long time in San Antonio." Sure. Um, so why is it important that we experience? these restaurants and have that cultural experience, especially here in San Antonio. For sure, you know, I'm born and raised San Antonio. I love San Antonio, <clears throat> excuse me, went to Taft High School. My grandma's house is five minutes from my restaurant. And what we're trying to do is just bring our heritage and bring our food back. Um, it's not necessarily, like people ask me all the time, are you authentic? And I'm like, well, I'm authentic. I'm a real person. Are you, asking, <laughs> you know, are you asking me, is it traditional? No, right? It's my spin. It's my take on what my family did, what I've learned, what I've seen, and what we're trying to put out. My little sister is celiac. Shout out to Michelle. She runs my front of the house. She's amazing. If you ever met her, she's the kindest soul on the earth. I love her. And I met yes. her. Yeah, she was great. Her. And uh, she, when she got diagnosed with celiac, I saw the day-to-day -day struggles of how it is to eat or the judgment or the questions. And so I just wanted to create a safe space. And then also everything we do is real food. When people say that, well, I don't want to eat at a gluten-free, I don't want to eat at a certain thing. Well, what is gluten? Like, again, right, we create food that's just food. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be labeled as something. And that's what we try to do every time, is just create a memorable dining experience in whatever aspect we do. And that's, that's amazing. And I mean, look, it smells delicious. I am <laughs> really willpower here, not just diving in. <laughs> 
But through the year, especially the last two years, we've yeah. talked about some of these small businesses, the restaurants closing down, not being able to afford the raising prices. People who can't afford to go out. A lot of families watching right now, dealing with tough times. So as a restaurant owner, what are some of the obstacles that you currently face and you know, what does it look like going forward? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, everyone is, is I don't wanna say tired of hearing it, but it is, it's rising costs. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to give an affordable living wage to the people who work for us. And then we're trying to put a quality product out. You're right, I can't compete with the McDonald's, Taco Bell, KFC, because they buy in bulk and they sell tens of hundreds of thousands of more meals than me. But what you can get from somebody like a local restaurant like myself is, I curated that, that's my soul, that's my heart, that's my memory, that's my love on the plate. So when you come in and you choose to dine with us, it really is special because you're not just eating my food, you're eating a part of who we are. So that's the main difference in supporting local. Yes, it's gonna cost five, $10 more possibly, but save it for that special time, come and support us, come out and eat. And I'm not just saying us, I'm saying everybody. Right. You know, some of my favorite, one of my favorite restaurants we were just talking about is Meadow. Chef mm -hmm. PJ and what Lindsay do are amazing. I can't wait to get out there myself for that. So, I mean, just supporting local really does matter on any aspect, no matter who it is. Okay, Suzanne, and you mentioned it, other restaurants. So who are the other restaurants participating? Well, there's over a hundred, so I can't <laughs> name them. We would be here all day. Uh, yeah, I, I can't do it, you guys. I wish that I could, but there's over a hundred. And listen, you touched on something that was really important important as well, which is you know what the price point is. So you can go out and you can get that really great bottle of wine that you wanted to try. And, you know, you can get extra things while you're out at the restaurant because you're not going to break the bank. I mean, this is a really great opportunity. And there's so many menus to choose from. I think that's really the hardest part is to choose the menus. I mean, it's a lot of menus to read. It, it was. So when I we did this last year, going through all the menus, which mm -hmm. are posted <gasps> online, which posted is posted on the yes. screen right phenomenal. now. Absolutely. It took time because I had to go through all the menus and yeah. then I was looking at all the different price points, locations and like, oh, what's what place have I we not tried? It was kind of it, it's a lot. You do your homework, but it's so, so worth it because uh, we I, I know I love to eat local. I know mm -hmm. you are love to eat local. Well, that's the thing. And, and Chef Leo, you had a good point. Yeah, obviously local businesses, local shops, they're competing with the places that can buy in bulk. But right. not only are you helping small businesses, but this food, I mean, we should get another close up of the food. This food <laughs> is objectively better than all of the other places. What is that, this dish, by the way? Uh, so it's a honey walnut shrimp. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it has a house like bang bang sauce into it, salt, garlic sauteed shrimp. The last yeast. half hour has been so difficult because we could smell you cooking. <laughs> and I, what we've is just in been the bang counting bang down sauce? the minutes. Uh, so it's a mixture of a little bit of garlic, uh, ginger. Already in. Yeah, lemongrass, <laughs> a little bit of mayo, sweet condensed milk, lemon juice. You don't have to give away the secrets. I was like, don't tell them everything. Yeah, okay. Don't tell them everything. Mayo right. and condensed Fantastic. sweet Fantastic. We say, we always say that, you know, the uh, recipe. Is just a recipe. The cook cook actually brings the soul to the recipe. Mm -hmm. So brought a lot of soul today. Thank, thank you for you. the soul. Thank you, Chef Leo, Suzanne. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Thank Thanks for guys. having us. First Hi. in person interview for Leading SA since the pandemic. So thank you exactly. so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Guys. Thank, you. thank you for the snacks. and happy eating, everyone. Oh yeah, yeah. this is fantastic. We're I'm sure definitely... our directors and producers are going to jump in too. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, right. but later this morning, if you're looking for any of that information about culinary, you can find it um, posted on ksat.com. Time now, 8:43. 40 degrees. 39 degrees. 39. Oh. 39 max. And it's cold out there, but hey, Mia says things are going to warm up. And we're actually, actually getting just, a, is that wa water? Is that rain on the roads there? Yep. Oh my gosh, it's already happening. Hey, Mia says lots of rain on the way. She'll explain when we come back. Welcome back, everyone. Your time is 847 this Sunday morning. Two things you're going to need if you do have to step out and about today. You're going to want the jacket because it's going to be chilly out there, and you're also going to want the umbrella. We've already started to see some drizzle, a little bit of light rain develop here in San Antonio, and we are expecting coverage to increase throughout the remainder of the day. Much needed rain is on the way for a good portion of South Central Texas. That coverage turning widespread through the overnight tonight and into Monday morning. It's possible we find a few non-severe rumbles of thunder out there as we sleep. Also some pockets of heavy rain, which is something we'll need to monitor for the Monday morning drive. So expect a rainy start to the day tomorrow, but then that coverage is expected to decrease into the afternoon. Just an isolated chance into the second half of the day on Monday, drying things out just a little bit there. But after that, we're not finished with the rain chances. Scattered rain chances continue through midweek. Temperatures are also going to start warming after today. Speaking of temperatures, 37 
37 degrees right now here in San Antonio. So a chilly start, but not quite as cold as where we were this time yesterday. You can see we really have that mist out there right now, settling into a good chunk of Bear County. Most of us above freezing, with the exception being the Lost Maples area stretching over to Rock Springs. Right now, those temperatures sitting right about 30 to 31. We were talking about how we look at visibility a little bit earlier to really see where some of those finer mist particles are in the atmosphere. You can see now San Antonio International visibility has dropped down to two miles, so starting to see some of that mist and drizzle up there on the north side near 281 and 410. Even on the southwest side near Port SA, Castroville seeing some of that mist there as well, and that's likely going to be a trend that continues here over the next several hours before we start to see some more notable rain pop up on your authority radar. All right, speaking of authority radar, we've been monitoring the far northwestern portions of Val Verde County throughout the morning. Some rain pushing in to that part of our region. That's where temperatures, even near Rock Springs and Lakey, are near or slightly below freezing. No major impacts are expected, but we could see if that rain continues to fall in those areas, we could see a little bit of a light glaze form on some of those elevated surfaces. No travel impacts expected or anything like that. And as temperatures do warm here over the next couple of hours, that brief window then goes away and we just transition to cold liquid rain, which is what most of us are going to be dealing with throughout the remainder of this Sunday. You can see by three o'clock this afternoon near New Braunfels, Gonzales, Pleasanton, even for us here in San Antonio. We are expecting some of those scattered showers to develop, increasing in coverage later on this evening by 6 p.m. Same areas even out near Lakey and Rock Springs, Southern Edwards Plateau and portions of the Hill Country. Watch what happens through the overnight, though. We are expecting another burst of upper level energy to push into the region, which means coverage is expected to increase. The radar is going to fill in widespread rain with some embedded rumbles expected and pockets of heavy rain continue. 7 a.m. Monday, the Monday morning drive, especially along and east of I-35, going to be a bit messy out there. So give yourself some extra time out the door tomorrow and plan to take the rain gear with you. We're going to call it a 90% potential overnight tonight at 80% potential first thing tomorrow, drying things out into Monday afternoon. Still scattered rain chances continue Tuesday and into Wednesday. By the time all is said and done here closer to San Antonio, we could pick up on anywhere between two to three inches of much needed rain. So definitely looking forward to that. Something we'll continue to monitor for you in the days ahead. Again, today chilly, high near 40, but after that we see a warm front move through into tomorrow and take a look at how temperatures respond. Morning lows climbing into the 50s and afternoon highs even near 70 by Thursday. Hmm, looks like I'm going to be uncovering my plants in the rain. Yes, I'm sure they're I excited. thought I would make it. Well, yeah, it's already starting a little bit, but hey, I'm sure all the plants are actually going to be really excited to get some of that. I'm excited. Good. Thank you, Mia. Of course. Thank you, Mia. 851, 39 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning and welcome back. January is National Blood Donor Month and our KSAC community partners they're helping people schedule their donations. If you want, if you can't, if you can donate, maybe for the first time, or if you're a pro, just visit donatebloodtoday.com. Schedule your donation. All right, hot off the presses. Just got our pollen count in for the day. Great news. Mountain cedar falls significantly from where it was yesterday. Now down into the low category. Molds are also low at 2.30. So good whenever it does come to the pollen count. And hey, I imagine since rain chances are increasing today, already starting to see that in and around the San Antonio area, mountain cedar likely will stay a bit lower, especially compared to where it has been over the past several weeks in the next couple of days. So again, chilly out there this Sunday. Definitely take the rain gear, the jacket, the umbrella with you if you're stepping out for any back half of the weekend plans. As this rain coverage increases into this afternoon and evening, even more so overnight and first thing tomorrow morning, a messy morning commute expected for your Monday. After that, scattered rain chances still in the forecast through Wednesday, just isolated for the back half of the week and temperatures much warmer than what we saw this past week with lows in the 50s and highs in the 60s. Thank you, Mia. Max, before we go, who's on the Play, who's in the playoffs today? Who's playing? What time? Oh, okay. So we have Bucks, Lions, and then we have Bills, Chiefs. You're a Chiefs fan. Go Chiefs. You're a Taylor Swift fan. <laughs> have a great day. Have a good Sunday, y'all.